in times of protests, especially when it comes to LGBTQ people, the cops are not our friends. We report about a police open fire as police open fire on a North Carolina gay bar and uh, while staff are handing out water to protesters. We've prepared a little setup of it. Watch this. Chill out, don't be aiming at them. This is my business. Tim. This is my business. I rent this place. I rent here. I rent here. I rent this place. This is my business. This is my business. This is my business. This is my business! This is my business! Come on, Tim. This week has seen dramatic events resulting in the murder of George Floyd. Protests have erupted in cities across the country, and it has affected the LGBT community, including a police officer calling a group of LGBTQ protesters fucking faggots. Now we report police opened fire on an LGBTQ <coughs> bar in North Carolina after they received an anonymous tip that the bar was giving water bottles to protesters. Tim Lemuel is the owner of the Ruby Deluxe in Raleigh, North Carolina, and his business was vandalized with a white supremacist symbol and the bar's glass doors and windows were broken. So on Sunday evening, he decided to stay at his business in part to deter vandals. He also set up a first aid station for people who needed medical attention, washing tear gas and pepper spray out of people's eyes, and handing out water bottles and granola bars. He said that he and some staff were working there for about seven hours before six police officers arrived and told them to move just after midnight. The mule advised the police officers that he owned the business. The police officers again told him to move, quote, saying, the game is over, get out. The mule walked back toward his bar and police said, you've been told, and then opened fire with flashbangs and rubber bullets. The attack occurred on Monday night. Raleigh City Council member and Ruby Deluxe patron Sage Martin said, quote, it's a safe place for so many people. It is home to queer folks. He added, referring to the Stonewall Uprising, we're still dealing with those same issues for those same people today. And hearing those words echo so aggressively as if they were a game to be had, I think it speaks perfectly well to the kind of culture and thinking that exists and pervades law enforcement in America today. Well, what do y'all think about what we've just watched in Raleigh? I, I want to say something about this because, you know, listen, guys, I think I've been an activist for most of my life, and I've been involved in a lot of protests where police were involved. We have to recognize that in this moment, tensions are very, very high. And the fact is, this is the saddest moment probably in the history of our country. The mayor of Atlanta said to the people of Atlanta, I tell my sons every night that in this moment, stay home because I cannot protect you. This is what she's then echoed to the residents of Atlanta. We have to understand, yes, it is our right to stand up. It is our constitutional right to protest. And in this moment, just see what you're, what you're putting yourself at risk, and you have to assume the risk. There is a lot of risk involved right now in this moment to protest. We cannot, we, we already know that the cops, the culture is there in the, our law enforcement. And right now is not to test whether they're not, that's true. This isn't a simple matter. It's not just about what's right in the protests versus what's right in what's going on. Obviously, these protests matter. Black lives matter. What's going on matters. Unfortunately, it has to be the protests versus coronavirus. The fact that that's even on play, that we view it in that relationship, and that Trump is putting that kind of story out, is in itself a problem. Because both things are so important, and yet we're not going to get to the result of any of them for a very long time. Maybe our country will do more. I do not believe so. If I learned anything from running the Wall of Love in Tampa um, a few years ago, in 2016 and 2017, 
the biggest lesson that I took away from that was that in times of protests, especially when it comes to LGBTQ people, the cops are not our friends. And I'm sorry to say that, and I'm sorry for the people that will be offended by that, but our movement started because of police brutality. Our movement started because of excessive force and abuse of the powers that the police have. So today, all these 51 years later, we're still dealing, as, as the man said, we're still dealing with the same problems. And it's important to remember, as Josie said, that protesting is dangerous. Protesting is not only a privilege, but it can be dangerous. And you have to be aware of those risks that you take when you protest or when you help protesters. The American government and law enforcement is not well known for being kind to protesters, especially queer ones. You know, I would like to I would like to point out and I'm going to um, read this, that the Wake County office um, use of, po of force policy said that officers can't use weapons. This is in that in that town, those officers quote unquote officers can't use weapons neither lethal nor less than lethal if people are only putting up passive or verbal resistance so the use of those um of those rubber bullets and those flashbangs um was not within the um policy uh use of force that that police department um has in play once again, we see that police officers will always think, you know, in general, and this is coming from my black experience, that police officers um, oftentimes think that uh, once they don that badge, that they can do whatever they want to do, rules and policies be damned. But black people have been telling y'all for centuries and decades that this was happening. The only difference is now it's being filmed. And what we're seeing is that it's being filmed and it's still happening. So you can only imagine how bad it was before shit got filmed. Because before when we would say this and this happened, nobody believed us. Now you could see it for yourselves and officers still try to lie on top of that. Still try to get away with shit on top of that. They don't care. So the problem is systemic and it's institutional. And this Very is true. what we see being played out all across the country. Oh, final thoughts? Final thought, I am shocked that they took fire, even if it was rubber bullets. I can't imagine being the people protecting their property during a riot, uh, fearing, seeing, hearing the gunshots aimed at them, fearing that you're going to be killed by an officer right there. When I read this report, it did say that the police officers were not sorry for what they did, and they felt their mission was successful because it got them inside and off the street. They were st trying to stop them from trying to help the protesters from eyewashing and giving them water. It's a very sad, sad story. And how is that any different? Uh, we've got to move on. But how is that any different than Trump's demonstration of crossing out of the White House across Lafayette Park? It's the same justification. The ends do not justify the means. And by the way, we have to pay really close attention to this. A new poll this week reports that seven in the low 70 percentile of white America trusts our police now. And only in the upper 30 percentile does the black America, black community of America trust our police. It's an indication our police forces all across the uh, country need to do a better job.